You are all that matter. Lord, we give you praise. We bless your name, Lord. We have just come to say thank you once more for your grace and your mercy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because on every side we are waxing stronger because the gate of hell shall never prevail. I just want to welcome every one of us again um, to this um, um, evening broadcast. You know, it's our daily broadcast and God has been so um, good to us. What I mean is that His grace has been so much sufficient for us. And I also want to thank God for every one of you that make it point of duty to feed your spirit. To feed your spirit. There's some um, thing I learned uh, back far back in school some years back. I was not born again, but we have a lecturer who came in one day. He was trying to talk about how to balance a life. And uh, most people that are around me knows this thing I'm about to say. It's a Greek word. And so they said they put a man in a place with a lot of strength and the other one had no single strength but he had a lot of wisdom and so put up both of them were put in the um, ring to fight guess what the, the the fight was dropped that one had wisdom to know where to punch but there was no little strength to back it up so the other giant had all the strength to knock this one out but before he will swing his hand, this one is behind him laughing. So they did that and it ended up a draw. So they now arrive in a word in Greek. They call it skaluskai agato. Skaluskai agato. Strain the mind and the body. So each time we come in here daily, what are we doing? We are training our spirit man. What most people do is they rely more on food, food feeding their flesh. But the spirit is zero. Guess what? It is the spirit that controls the physical. Once we give the spirit enough attention, balance it up with the natural, then you have the supernatural. That is what we're talking about. So I just want to thank God for every one of you daily that also make sure you are there. And what you just do for me now is help to share this video, like and share this video so that your friends can come out. Those you need to call, please do that. Then I'm about to go into the world right now so we can pray. I'm talking about training the mind and the body hallelujah ladies and gentlemen today i want to look at uh, uh, exodus chapter 14 exodus 14 i it's a series again i want to see how i can work on this every day hallelujah and now um it, let me take from verse 9 it says but the egyptians pursued after them and all the horses and of the chariots of pharaoh and his horses and his horsemen and his army and overtook them as they had come by the sea. Now I want to go a little bit um, down. Then the children of Israel that now in verse 12 say, Is this not the word that we did tell you in Egypt? Say, Let us alone. In other words, we don't want to leave. Leave us alone here in Egypt. Now I go to verse 13. I'll just be skipping it like that. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still. Note it now. Underline your Bible if you can or write it somewhere. Stand still. We're going to be dealing with that now. And see the salvation of the Lord, which they, which He will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye see today, ye shall see them again no more. And He says in verse forty, He said, "The Lord shall fight for you, and you shall hold your peace." Now let us check something that is the turning point where I am looking. And the Lord, verse fifty says, "And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore Christ that unto me, speak unto the children of Israel that they go." forward speak unto the children of israel that they go forward father thank you because you are god thank you because there is nothing you can do i'm asking at this hour again that you break afresh upon us take all the glory take all the honor in jesus name we pray amen and amen ladies and gentlemen this was still the scenario of the israelites why they left egypt but the first thing i wanted to note there is that they did not want to leave Egypt. You see, the worst form of enemy to a man is the usual. <laughs> the usual. <clears throat> Most people can never be anybody today because they are afraid to take a step. Ladies and gentlemen, the usual 
the thing that, and I'm talking about the comfort zone. When a man decides to stay in comfort zone, ladies and gentlemen, he will never make anything meaningful in life. The reason why we, we, the white man seems to be having dominion mostly over Africa is because he took step where all Africans were not taking step. He crossed the Atlantic Ocean to come and discover where the white black man was staying, where the black man was is in his comfort zone. So we realize that the, the Israelites here, you won't blame them because 400 years is enough to sometimes to make a man to get used to some things. Especially, and we're going to deal with the season we are now. Ladies and gentlemen, did you notice that? That the Bible tells us here that these people said to Moses, just because of little things that happened, they have left now. Pharaoh is saying, go and pursue and bring them back. So in front of them, they were seeing the Red Sea, and behind them, they were seeing the soldiers. But please note that God knew another way would have taken them through. But God decided the way of the Red Sea. Sometimes there are times that God takes us through some area. Everything we need may not be there. It may look blinkful. It looks as if there's nothing. But guess what? God has a plan. So he took them through this journey. Through the way of the Red Sea. He already had a plan. You may not see a bridge. You may not see boats to cross. But guess what? God have you covered. Ladies and gentlemen, when they saw the Red Sea in front and they saw behind them that they were being pursued, what was in them began to manifest. You see, you don't know what is in a man until a man is confronted with fear or things that make him or her angry. And so they began to say, Moses, is this not with what we told you in Egypt that you should leave us alone? Is this not what we told you that we are not ready to go and you convince us that we should follow you? Ladies and gentlemen, these people got to this place that look has made them to be vomiting nonsense. I'm coming now. Now watch this. Now in between this, because of the pressure of Moses, that's where I'm going now. Moses told the people to stand still. Now that is where I am going. Breaking the yoke of what negative prophecies that's my assignment this is it most of you have been standing still because of what was spoken over your life now the question is if these people need to stand still the enemy will catch up with them now all of you hearing the sound of my voice let me tie to the season we are the season we are may say stand still sir don't stand still the season will not feed your family don't stand still it's time for you to keep going forward, sir. The season, it may make you, if you stand still, you may end up being a beggar instead of a lender. So, this time around, Moses told the people, stand still. Please note it. Moses did not hear from God as at that time when he spoke. Moses spoke that word. It was a prophecy from Moses which was not backed up by God. There are some of you listening to me now. There's a word spoken over your life that seems to have made you to stand still. Some of you, negative word was spoken over your mother. Like we read yesterday, a man was, um, a man was born lame from the mother's womb. We know that life did not start from the womb. So what happened? Between where the man was created and the womb, something happened. This man was born lame. Now, for these people here, they got to the Red Sea. The God that took you through the way of the Red Sea certainly knows how to make a way through. But guess what? Moses saw the pressure from the people. When the people began to say, is this not what we told you? Not to take us out of Egypt? Moses now said, stand still. Stand still. So, ladies and gentlemen, there are many people today who are still standing still because there's a prophetic word over them that they should stand still. There are people today that are standing still because of what has happened in their office. They were sacked. They are still standing still. There are many people today who are not getting ready to enter into any other relationship because the first relationship was full of disappointment. Now they are standing still because any other person that comes, they begin to use the eye of the former person to look at this and it make them to stand still until they are old. 
Ladies and gentlemen, there are people today that are standing still because of one disappointment, because of one thing someone said against them. They said, I am not doing it again. I am going to stand still. Ladies and gentlemen, the prodigal son was another example. In Luke chapter 15, we are told that he met the father. He said, give me the Lord that falleth unto me. And he was actually giving. Guess what? He ran out of the house. He made a mistake because he would have stayed under the tutelage of the father. He would have stayed to be matured. But in maturity, he left. Immediately, he left into far country. The thing started against him. Guess what? He had a decision to stand still or to return to the father. There was a decision to stand still or to return to the father. He stood there. He was hungry. He asked somebody, ah, please, can I eat? They said, it's not enough. After they had spent the money with him, they said, okay, why not go to the, the piggy pen? Go there because I heard that my father is about to feed the pigs. And this man got there and he begged the man who was feeding the pigs and he said, please, sir, can I have a handful of the, of the hogs that these pigs are eating? The man said, sorry, and you can't have it because these pigs have to be full. They have to finish eating. After eating, maybe we will gather the remnants and give to you. This man said, that devil is a liar. And the Bible said he came to himself. Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot make meaningful progress in life until you come back to yourself. Don't try to be somebody else. You end up dying as number two. Don't try to imitate because imitation is limitation. Hear me now. This man came back to himself. He said to himself, while I was in my father's house, there was never any day I lacked food. While I was still in faith in Christianity, this was okay. While I was still standing for God, this was okay. While I was still doing the will of God, this was okay. The little time I backslidden now, everything is beginning to turn against me. He said, no, I have to return to my father. I'm not going to stand still here in the foreign land. I'm not going to stand still here in far country. I have to return to my father. Moses said to these people, stand still. Guess what? He backed it up with God. And he said, and see the salvation of the Lord. There was good prophecy. Everything looks good. You know, some of us like to stand still. Because when you are standing still, you are not sweating. When you are standing still, you know, nothing. It does not take anything from you to stand still. As a pastor, as a man, as a woman, it does not take anything to stand still. How do you fail? Do nothing. How do you succeed? Do not do something. So, Standing still here means standing, doing nothing. So he said to them, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. All of you hear me again. If you are a woman, I thank God that you are a housewife. If you notice that money is always causing quarrel in the home, you know what we we'll do? Don't stand still. Sit and discuss with your husband and tell him, sir, do you mind if I add and do one thing or the other? Add to what you are so that I don't put pressure on you. Instead of standing still, that's what I'm saying. Ladies and gentlemen, he stood still. He said, he said, he told them to stand still and he said, you will see the salvation of the Lord. What did he say? For the Egyptian whom you see today, you shall see them again no more. Good prophecy. I would have loved it if I didn't see verse 15. In verse 15, the Bible says, and the Lord said unto Moses, that means verse 14, it was not God who said it was Moses who spoke out of pressure. Moses spoke out of the pressure to satisfy the people. You know, there are times in church, we, we tell people, we prophesy over them. There are some people that are lazy, but we just go, okay, God will help you. But the truth is that what are you doing that God will help you? God will help you means you are doing something that he will help you to accomplish. Because Adam was created and God gave him things to be doing. Ladies and gentlemen, in this scripture, Moses said, stand still, verse 15, God said to him, Moses, why did you tell, the, why are you crying unto me? Why did you tell the people to stand still? Tell them to go forward. Why did you tell them to stand still? Tell the people to go forward. Tell them to go forward. Hear me now. I don't know the prophecy over your life. I don't know that thing, that, that mentality you have. That make you to wait until people bring before you rise. Listen to me. He said, tell the people to go forward. Now listen again as I conclude this message. You see, if they had, or if they needed to stand still, guess what? The Pharaoh will catch up with them. 
and they'll be killed by the river bank. The thing they were afraid of will catch up with them. And God is not telling Moses, why did you tell them to stand still? Tell them to go forward. All of you hearing the sound of my voice, listen now. How do you go forward? You go forward, number one, having God as your compass, the Holy Spirit. It's just got to be the one leading you. It's just got to be the one leading you. And of course, remember when we talk about going forward, we also talk about maturity. Don't ever ask God for things that you are not mature to handle. It will be suicidal for a 10 years old boy to meet the daddy and say, Dad, today is my birthday. Can I have the key to your car? I want to drive myself and go and see my friends. It's suicidal. It's not allowed. Maturity. That was the case of the prodigal son. The prodigal son did not get the desired maturity. Hear me, someone here. Age is not maturity. Listen to me. You develop into maturity. You can be a you can be old, you can think, oh, I'm 30, I'm 40. But what? With experience of 15. So it's not about the age. I know that age can cage. Don't start looking well. I think and I think now I'm mature. I think I can marry. Check, are you truly ready for it? Because if you're not ready for it, it's going to send you back again. Suppose he said. Tell the people to go forward. What are the things that keep people in one position? Negative prophecies. Evil hand being laid on people. Exchanging people's destiny. I don't want to go into that so deep. I don't want to go into that so deep. What are the things? The things that were spoken from behind. There are people that each time they hear, you remember Moses? I mean, sorry, you remember Peter? Peter saw Jesus while he was in the boat. And the boat was rocking, about to capsize. And Peter said, Master, if it is you, bid me to come. And Jesus said, come. And the word come became a carpet on the water. So he stepped on come, not on water. So people used to say, Peter walked on water. Peter was actually walking on obedience. If you are walking on obedience, you can't sink. So Peter began to walk on the obedience, come. That's all he saw. And he saw Jesus. He had come. So those two words, there are people that see without hearing. And there are people that hear without seeing. So he saw and he heard. And so he moved on that water. And while he was walking, did you notice later that Peter was sinking? Why was he sinking? What they said behind. Because when he was stepping out, I'm very sure those in the boat who were not ready to step out with him, they said, Peter, are you really sure of what you want to do? Are you really sure? You know you are not a boat. The last person that attempted it sank. Can you remember so so and so person that died? Can you remember that one that died? Can you remember this person that did the same thing he died? Peter, sorry, what is your last word we will tell your wife at home? Please, can you write a note so that we tell her that we saw you when you were taking the shot that killed him? Ladies and gentlemen, Peter ignored them and stepped out. In between getting to Jesus, he began to remember what they said. That was part of the thing. Probably look back. And what did they say? The Bible said he began to sink. Thank God that he only began, but it was not completed. There are people that when they begin sinking, until they are fully immersed, they don't return back to the cell like the prodigal son. Jesus needed to, Peter needed to cry out, Jesus, I'm sorry, help me. Why? I removed my eyes from you. I removed my eyes from the direction. I trusted the people behind me. I believe what they said more than you. Help me, help me. And the Bible says he was restored back on top of the water. So I'm saying again, ladies and gentlemen, ensure maturity is there. Ensure you don't listen to what they are saying behind you. Ensure you don't fall back to back prophecy. We know there are people, the worst thing is, let me say this again, I'm sorry. I know some people who belong to a Pentecostal church and all, guess what? You'll be amazed where they go in the name of prophecy. 
you'll be amazed at what they do in the name of prophecy. You'll be amazed. You'll be amazed. I've seen people who tell you, well, um, they saw their dead father appear to them in the dream and he said they should do X, Y, Z. And they are Christian. You see them begin to actually do what someone in the dead said to them. Such things can make people stand still. Because why? Look at your scripture. The dead and the living has nothing in common. It's appointed unto man to die. After that is judgment. So any other power that comes to speak to you, that is your dead father, is not your dead father, but a familiar spirit. But such person is going to church. A person is going on the way. A stranger meets you and begins to give you prophecy that was not part of your going out in the morning. And before you know it, he tells you not to go out for seven days. He tells you what to do. He tells you go and bath in the midnight as if you don't bath before. Before you know it, that man is a standstill. Hear me again. Use the word of God as your compass. Use it as your compass. I'm saying this again. The point that Moses said to them, stand still. Ladies and gentlemen, there are people still standing still. Some of you listen to me now. There are compound people back into, they start standing still. There are streets people enter, they are standing still. There are offices people enter, they are standing still. You know why? There's this slogan that says, if you can't beat them, join them. No, sir. If you can't beat them, run from them. Run, because he that tries to run away, surely live to fight another day. Ladies and gentlemen, so Moses said to them, stand still. And God said to Moses, Moses in verse 15, Exodus 14, why did you tell them to stand still, tell them to move forward? What was the turning point? As they moved forward, now, a stretching of the rod, guess what? The sea divided. You know why God, God wanted to be sure that they would cross? Because the last statement they made was, we didn't want to leave Egypt. So there's no use for God to divide the Red Sea until he sees you take your first step. God was simply saying, I'm not going to divide this sea. I will divide it, but I want to see you make the move. Faith is the substance of this hope for. The evidence of this not seen. What is faith? Faith is only what takes you to the next phase. What is faith? Faith is putting all your eggs in one basket, but in God's hand. What is faith? Faith is what I call supernatural next level. So everybody taking a step of supernatural next level. So I want you to understand that as you are listening to the sound of my voice, if you want to do the supernatural, you have to start taking a step now. You have to take the first step. So God was waiting for him to see that if Moses divided the sea, do you know what the people would have done? After dividing the sea, somebody would just make move a motion and say, excuse me, uh, Moses, are you really sure that this thing is solid? Are you really, really sure that when we enter, the water will not close up? Moses, I think you should first cross. So God was not ready to joke. And so God said to them, I want to see the step first. Tell them to go forward. I'm not going to divide the sea. Tell them to go forward. If you lost your job, go forward and look for something to do. If they sack you in one office, there are many offices waiting to accept you. If one relationship left you, there's another ship that is waiting to welcome you. Don't die in your past story because there's enough glory ahead of you. Tell the people to move forward. Hear me again, somebody. It's time to move forward. It's time to go forward. It's time to break negative prophecy. It's time to break curse. People say you can't make it. You can make it. They curse your father, but you can tell yourself, I am not cursed. You are a new species. It's time to go forward. And he said to the people, he said to them, tell the people to go forward. And so when they took step to go forward, the sea divided. And when the sea divided, God again Raise the soldiers behind to pursue them to cross. So one day, me and you, we are going to say thank you to the enemy that pursued us to cross. One day, me and you, we are going to say thank you to the enemy that pursued us to the cross. I need cross and cross. Cross and cross. Now the same spelling. We, I want you to understand. So he pursued them to cross the Red Sea. So we are going to thank God one day for the enemy that pursued me and you. That made us to see the cross of Jesus. That pursued us to. Because if they didn't pursue us. Some of us will still be in our beer parlor. Some of us will still be doing what we are doing. Some of us will still be in prostitution. 
Some of us will still be in drugs or one thing or the other. But guess what? When the enemy pursued us, he didn't know he was pursuing us to the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what happened? They crossed the sea. They crossed because the enemy pursued them. That was a big mistake. Because this season we are, every stubborn pursuer of the church, they will be swallowed by that red sea. In the name of Jesus, every stubborn pursuer, all of you note my word, I am speaking from here with authority that every word that said the church of God should stand still, very soon they will perish in the Red Sea. In the name of Jesus, because we all are crossing. In the name of Jesus, every satanic word that was spoken that brought about coronavirus is about to return back to sender. In the name of Jesus, millions of people have died because of that. And we command this cause right now to return to sender in the name of Jesus. We break that satanic curse. We break the satanic curse. We break the satanic curse. We break, break that satanic prophecy. Every prophecy that kept you where you are, I break it in the name of Jesus. Hear me, somebody. Someone spoke to you and he said you will never get a better person. And since then, you've been struggling. You are wondering, is it what this people, person told me or somebody told you? You will never have somebody give you money more that I ever gave to you. And now you look as if you've never gotten money up to what that person gave you. Hear me now, child of God. I want you to understand if God be for you, no power can be against you. Who is it that said the thing and it come to pass when Jehovah God said it not? It's time to go forward. I don't know how they told you. I don't know what the native doctor said. I don't know who cursed you, but it's time to go forward. God told them. God said to Moses, that prophecy is not me. My own prophecy is of the people to go forward. So you hearing the sound of my voice. Any word that says you should stand still, I command the word broken now. In the name of Jesus, it's time to make progress. It's time to cross. It's time to go forward. It's time to make progress. It's time to get there. If you can sit there, you will get there. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, as I bring this thing to a run up today so that we can, we can pray. I realized that he told them, tell the people to stand still. And God said, no, tell them to move forward. So when they entered the Red Sea, we saw that the Red Sea divided. But the stubborn Pashua will not understand that the, now, the way, where Pharaoh made a mistake is that he wanted to cross the road he did not construct. He didn't construct it. His God did not construct it. He never accepted the God who constructed it. But he wanted to make use of the road that God constructed. He didn't construct a bridge. But God made a bridge. He didn't construct a road through the water. God constructed it for his children. But Pharaoh wanted to use it. And God said, no, enough is enough. Hear me, child of God. Hear me, pastor. Hear me, man of God. Hear me, whoever cares to hear me there. I want you to understand that very soon, the enemy will realize they made a big mistake. The biggest mistake that you can make is for you to tell the church to stand still. Let me let you know, it's time to move forward. And that's why some of us have decided on this side, now, come what may daily. Yes, you stop us from few days of the week, but we have decided to start it every day of the week. The devil is a liar. We can't stand for, we can't stand still. We need to go forward. Maritally, I know you must go forward. Spiritually, I know you must go forward. You will never be stopped. Now, don't forget this here. Any word any man spoke over you, they have mouth to say it. You also have mouth. God gave you mouth. God gave the native doctor mouth. God gave you mouth. God gave the other one mouth. But you also have mouth, your mouth. It says, if you shall say to this mountain. What did the book of Job say? It said, when men shall say, they say, cast him down. It said, we shall say, they say, lift him up. So it means that me and you can decide to say, no, men are saying, cast him down. We are saying, lift him up. So what you say is what you will experience. Say it over yourself. Confess it over yourself. That is one way you can go forward. Say it and make merge your action with what you are praying. There are people who pray like this and they prophesy like this. I know a Christian when I talk to you in a few minutes. You have some Christians, anytime you talk, you hear them, it not easy, and I hate to hear such words. With them, with the word, it's not easy, but with God, we serve, it's easy. I want you to understand, you match your confession with your action. Match what you are saying with what you are doing. That's one of the ways you can keep going forward. Don't ever confess you don't have it. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the weak say I'm strong. Let the poor say I'm rich. Say it and enter it. Don't just use your mouth to say what you are going through. 
your what you are going through is what you are confessing. You are not confessing what you want to go through. I realize in this one, you have to confess it, then you go through it. So that's what God said to them. Now that you have confessed that you like to stay in Egypt, I'm not going to divide this Red Sea until I see your intention to cross. Moses, tell the people to go forward. That's my own way. I have changed the plan. Tell them to move forward. Ladies and gentlemen, time may not permit me, they eventually cross the Red Sea. Then the next verse we're talking about here, the Bible says, Miriam took tambourine. Moses also led the men. Why Mary and the sister led the women? They began to sing, sing unto the Lord, for he had triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider has he thrown into the sea. Ladies and gentlemen, they dance and they dance and they dance and they dance with their minds. For three good days, they moved in the wilderness now. There was no water. Remember, they just crossed the water here. But now they have been looking for water, there's no water. That is sometimes the next, that's what I call next devil in next level. Next level in next devil. There was no water. For three good days, they didn't see water. You know what it is for a man to stay without water for three days? When they finally found water, they all ran there, tasted it, they saw that the water was bitter, and they named it Mara. You know, like I always say, you never detect bitterness by sin. You don't detect bitter water by spacing. You detect it by experience, by tasting. So when they tasted it, they saw that it looked like water, but the component was not what makes water. Why? It was bitter. The question is who polluted it? The, the question is who went ahead of them to make sure that the water was made bitter? That's one thing. Anytime you are sent to go to next level, always pray before you arrive. Always ask God to go ahead of you. Because if not, there are powers that often go ahead. What is the assignment? Send them back. You know why God will allow, allow them to take through the way of the Red Sea? God took them through the way of the Red Sea again. Because if they see all I haven't gone three days, no water, see all this war and all, they would have returned back to Egypt. But because they don't have bridge, and they know that nobody will divide the Red Sea for them. So the only choice is to continue to go forward. So I prophesy going forward over every one of us in the name of Jesus. So we're going to take some prayer right now. Wherever you are, we take this tomorrow again. We take it off here. No, not tomorrow. On Sunday. Saturday on Sunday is communion uh, morning. We're going to take communion on Friday on Sunday morning. So let's do some confessional prayer right now. Anywhere you are, while you are typing with your hand, please type with your mouth. I tell you, a closed mouth is a closed heaven. Because why I'm leading you to do this, if I don't do this, that some of you daily, you can't say you pray quality prayer. Normally, I can just preach and close this Bible and walk away. So I want to make sure I lead you to pray quality. So wherever you are, this is the time again for you to key up with me if you have actually uh, prayed this prayer. Let's let, uh, if you have actually listened to the word of God, not many people will just come in and just time of prayer, they begin to pray and they don't want to hear the word. And each time you do that, you, sh you, you can't go to the next level because the word uh, is what can help us to overcome the world, which is the world out there. So let's pray. <laughs> say, everybody, say with me, say, oh Lord. oh Lord. Like I said again, don't forget, a closed mouth is a closed heaven. When you open your mouth, heavens open. So please, remember that if you shall say to this mountain, it is if you shall be quiet. So open your mouth. He said, open your mouth wide and we feel it. So your mouth is your sword. When you hear the sword of the spirit, it's in your mouth. So please, let's release that sword now. Join me, everybody. Your mouth, your mouth. Don't keep quiet. Say with me, say again. Say, oh Lord, I stand in authority. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I repent of my unbelief. I repent of my disobedience. Any form of disobedience that has kept me in one position, Lord, have mercy. Any disobedience that has kept me in where I am, Lord, I ask for mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You let your mercy. Let your mercy restore me again. So I stand by that same mercy. I hereby declare in the name of Jesus, any word spoken over my life that has kept me in one position, I break it now. I break it now. Every evil prophecy, every negative prophecy that was spoken by my enemies be nullified. Every negative prophecy that was spoken over my mother before I was born, I break it now. Every negative prophecy that was spoken, that I'm experiencing, I break it now. I break it now. Every prophecy that is against marriage, I command it now. 
break, 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 break. Every prophecy that kept me in one position, break now. In the name of Jesus, I command my story to turn around to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory, to glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I break the yoke of negative prophecy out of my life, out of my destiny. I say enough is enough. I renounce every works of darkness, every works of darkness from the pit of hell against my family. I break you now. I break the hold now. In the name of Jesus, I will not stand still. My life will not stand still. My finance will not stand still. My ministry will not stand still. We are marching forward. My people will not stand still. We are advancing. We are advancing. We are going forward. In the name of Jesus, negative, negative curse is here by renounce. It's broken now. It's broken now I take authority against every foul spirit, every counterfeit spirit. I renounce your power. I renounce your hold. Any covenant I enter, knowingly or unknowingly, that is keeping me in one position. I break it now. I break it now. Every occulting prophecies, every occulting pronouncement over my life, break now. Enchantment, divination, expire, expire, expire. Who is in a CRT team and it come to pass when Jehovah God said it now? We command it right now. Aspire by fire. Aspire by fire. You are not my portion. I renounce you. I break your hold. I break your hold. Out of my life. Out of my destiny. I am going forward. I'm making progress. I am going higher in the name of Jesus. Psalm 8 verse 17. It is written, I shall not die, but live to declare the works of the Lord. In the name of Jesus, I can never be down. I can never be down. I can never be broke. In the name of Jesus, what is stronger on every side? Say amen. Amen. There's somebody listening to me now. You are about to get good news. You are about to hear news that will make you dance without music. Marako to koli kata asagadagaba ibrakadagalagada asegedegederobo ibrakatala katayama elekete marunda yaba ibrakoto lende. Holy Ghost, thank you, thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Mighty God, we give you praise. Ancient of days, we give you praise. And God, John, we honor you. We say there is none like you. You are sitting Alpha and Omega. See the beginning and the end. In Jesus' name we pray. Now you're going to pray whatever belongs to me that has been held down. I command it to be released now. I am not begging, I am commanding it now. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and declare it. Father, I go to Yamaraba. I broke to the Kalagadaba. I rakata Kalagadaba. I raboko sekere Baba. I take authority in the dominion you have given to me. I take what belongs to me. I come to recover. I come to recover. I come to recover. Shata rakata. Shata rakata. Azakata barakata. I rako to yekele. I lako to yekede ye. I braga da da da. I lako ya. Holy Ghost, I give praise. Mighty God, have your way. You are Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, the rock of ages. We just give you all the glory. You are worthy of our praise, Lord. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You, Holy Ghost. We give you praise. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. We're going to take this thing very strong tomorrow. We're going to look at that of Mara, how people go through Mara experience and all. We're going to be going through a that tomorrow. It's going to be awesome. So we, we take it off from there tomorrow. It's going to be heavy. Please ensure everyone join us tomorrow. We're going to be uh, breaking the yoke of Mara over people's life. What I mean, Mara, bitterness. There are people that each time things is good. Before you know, it gets bitter again. It's when it's better, it gets bitter again. So they just keep eating between bitterness and bitterness and bitterness. And in as much as you are revolving around there, you can't actually have a testimony, sir. I used to be there by the grace of God. And God helps me. And so by the grace of God, he positioned us here for such testimony. If I tell you what I've been through, you'll be so amazed. You'll be so amazed. So we want to arrest the spirit of Mara, whatever make people to experience through bitterness. Please on Sunday morning, Ensure you don't miss joining us on Sunday morning. It's going to be heavy. It's going to be strong. And please, if you have not, uh, one way or the other, 
and be sending your seed to support this um, work of God, please make sure you do that. Do it. It's a civic right. It's a civic duty that you do that. That you do that. So make a transfer right now. On top of the the, the typing, you're going to see the account number. Some of you already have it, but on top of this this um, uh, broadcast now, we type it on top there. It's not scrolling today, but it's just on top there where the name is on the bill. So do that and send in your your um, seed and send in your tithes, whatever. Just send it across. I know the Lord Himself will help you. The Lord will sustain you. You will not go through spirit or to go through matter experience in Jesus' name. God Himself will fight for you. You will only hold your peace. You know what He did? He told them to stand still. But God said, go forward. And when he actually went forward, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, the Egyptians who may see today, they shall see them again no more. Guess what? We did not see them again truly. But it only happened when the people went forward. The quickest and best way, revenge, is for you to succeed. When you succeed, anything that needs to commit suicide will commit suicide. I have stopped praying for, Lord, kill my enemy. Lord, kill my enemy. I don't even know if I have enemy. I don't even know if I have any. But guess what? All I just do is to keep succeeding. Is to keep going forward. Is to keep, because you know why? It's only results that can cancel insult. If a man way pleases the Lord, he will make his enemies to be at peace with him. But if that man is not at peace with himself, listening to what he said, listening to who cost you, listening to the latest news, the latest CNN news, the latest, uh, how many people died of coronavirus? How many this one with that? How many this one with this? Such man can never go forward. It's a, it's a trying season, not only in Nigeria, it's all over the world. So if basically wherever you are, you see that you have lost your job, or the, um, the money is not really flowing the way it used to flow, understand that God is still good to you. Don't be ungrateful. As I always say that only great fools are not grateful. Only great F O O L are not grateful. So you have to be grateful for you to be full of God's blessing. Be grateful. Be grateful to God every day of your life. People pass through a lot. And guess what? Not only people that are suffering, there are people still flying high. There are people, as I'm talking right now, they are buying brand new cars, building houses, doing great exploits. So don't see yourself among those who are failing because your God can do a CD and abundantly. That's what I'm saying. It's time to go forward. Shake the dust. Shake the beast into the fire. Shake up the dust off your feet. Tell yourself, it is either I make it or I make it. It is either I succeed or I succeed. No other option. But while you are doing that, ensure you do it in the Lord. Ensure it is in the Lord. Ensure it's within the confinement of your conscience. Ensure you are not making somebody to be sad in order for you to think you are succeeding. That is the wrong way. Where you are making people are crying, you are making people to be sad at their expense, then you are succeeding. You think you are making it. That is also very, very wrong way. So it's important you don't forget that. And don't sell yourself into man's hands. Jesus, no man, I was preaching last time, he knew man, he did not commit himself unto men. Don't sell yourself into man. Understand this here, you can keep going forward. It's time to go forward. It's time to advance. It's time to enter next level. You can. It's possible. It's possible because people are still making it. God is awesome. Just stay in covenant with God. Stay in covenant with God. Stay in, those that do know they are God at this time, they shall do exploit. That's what I'm saying. Those that do know they are God. Those that do know they are God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploit. This is the season that you will know true Christian. Those that know they are God. So you better stay in covenant with God. If you are not giving your tithes, ensure you make it right now. God is not asking for 100%. It's one tenth of it. Try God with it continually and see your life. You will see that you will be making progress more than you ever thought. You know what? There will be a hand propelling you. Tithe is simply what I call you and God walking shoulder by shoulder. Anything that wants to push you has to also push God. You know why? Because you are in covenant with Him. That is very important. You don't forget that. So I want to say God bless every one of you today. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord himself help you. The Lord fight for you. The Lord give you your heart desire that is in line with his will in the name of Jesus. I declare you will never go back. I declare your life will keep going forward. By the reason of this word of God that has come from this altar, this place today, I want to announce that every negative prophecy that has been spoken over your life, I declare broken. By a higher anointing, I lay hand right now over your head. I command evil prophecy to be broken. 
evil prophecy to be broken. Any prophecy from your past that wanted to remain in the past, I command it broken in the name of Jesus. I don't know who you are. Someone cursed you. I'm laying hand on you right now. Yes, I'm laying hand on you right now. I'm laying hand on you. Somebody cursed you. And each time you keep remembering this curse that placed on you. As I lay this hand on you, I command that curse to be broken. In the name of Jesus, I break that curse. I break evil covenant. Go forward. Maritally, go forward. Spiritually, go forward. Financially, go forward. The curse is broken. The yoke is broken. It's time for you to advance. Receive grace to go forward. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now, you know what you do? Many of you can go to the private inbox and inbox me. You want me to pray with you, whatever? Go ahead. Let's do that. Inbox me right now. Inbox me right now. Then if you have not sent me your seed, please do that. I'll be praying for you one-on-one. -on -one. If I need to personally respond to your message, of course, you can be sure I will do that. God bless you. Please share this video on, on, and on again. Share it again. Listen to it again. There's something there for everybody. I'll personally listen again. God bless you. Keep soaring higher. It is time to go forward. My name is still Reverend Ben Yoragbai, the Jesus soldier. Shalom.